Hey everybody, uh, welcome to this IGN Google Hangout. We're, uh, we, we haven't done this often, but today, because we're all remote, we're going to talk about um, Star Wars Episode Seven. Apparently, J.J. Abrams, by all accounts, all reports, he's directing the movie. Um, so let's just get right down to it. What do you guys think about it? Scott Kalura. Uh Well, you know, um, I guess it's kind of an obvious choice um, and maybe could be read as a safe choice, but... Um, I think it's c cool. I mean, I think that he's going to make a great uh, Star Wars movie. Um, I, I I kind of am approaching it a, from a Star Trek fan's perspective because I see it as a reason to no. celebrate that he's leaving Star Trek, maybe. So. <laughs> wow. Wow. I think, okay. he's I think he's better suited for Star Wars than Star Trek is what it comes down to. Okay. Goldman, what do you say? I I'm super excited. I, I love Abrams, huge fan of his work, uh, big fan of the TV shows he's made. And I think he's a really fun director. Uh, I, I loved his Star Trek movie. It's funny, I just rewatched it like two weeks ago because my brother had never seen the movie, showed it to him, and he was saying, oh, man, this is so fun, and I was agreeing with him. So to me, I mean, I agree with Scott in that in some ways it's an obvious choice, but the thing is that there's no person that's going to be like, make everyone happy, and I think Abrams is a person that is very dependable, is, you know, obviously excited by the material, is a huge Star Wars fan. So, I, I, you know, just based on the work I've seen of his, I think he'll be a very cool person to do, to handle what is a huge responsibility right now. Joey? Uh, I, I agree with those guys, too, you know, that I think it's a, a pretty safe choice. Um, but, it's, and, you know, if the rumors are typically believed, I would, I would have loved to see Ben Affleck's Star Wars. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, Star would have been I've never wicked been wicked awesome. It would have been wicked awesome. Uh, I've never been a huge Star Trek fan, and you know it was his work on the reboot movie that really made me like take notice and want to know more about Star Trek because I just had never been interested in it. So, in that way, I'm I'm excited for his work in Star Wars too. And our our mystery guest, the the strange black mm. box appearing between Joey and Scott Kalora, is it's, none other than Roth Cornette. It's not. It's Megan Fox. An undisclosed location. That's right. That's right. She's gone. Location. That's right. She's gone full zero dark thirty here. We can't tell you where she is. But Roth, your thoughts on J.J. Abrams taking well, on the, Star Wars? The truth is, I'm naked in a steam room, and which is why the camera is blacked out. I am coming to you live with Megan Fox naked in a steam room. We'll you know, just have I, to imagine. She knows how to cultivate an audience, doesn't she? <laughs> that's right. That's. <laughs> <laughs> all, all you that, have to do now is say that you guys are both playing Halo. And then we, you... <laughs> well, in fact, sir, we are. <laughs> you know, I think what's interesting, I think what's really interesting about it, I guess in some ways it's a safe choice. I don't necessarily think it's a safe choice for his career. I actually think it's a rather large risk. Um, yeah. Because for any director taking this on, it would have been a rather large risk, and that's especially true for you know there were the rumors about Ben Affleck um, with Justice League as well, and I thought, man, but if he he's only done three films, if he screws that up, that's sort of it. I mean, it's going to rest on him. I think the same thing is true for for Star Wars, and a little less so for J.J. Abrams because he's so established, especially as a genre director. Um, yeah. But I think what's really interesting is that to Scott's sort of original point, he in many ways rebooted Star Trek. I mean, he did. He brought it to a broader audience. It makes me wonder if Kathleen Kennedy, I mean, how far away are we going to get from the original Star Wars tone? You know, that's kind of, that's what I'm wondering about it. Like, is this something where they think that J.J. Abrams is going to be able to re- Infuse or reimagine this franchise in a way. I don't know. You know, I mean, that's you know what I just realized? Way. Because you have a black box for a screen, we should have totally had a yellow scroll of all your words going up <laughs> as you were speaking. Um, I can put that in the post. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, as far as Abrams taking on Star Wars, I understand for all parties involved why they ended up going that way. I, I agree with Ross. Roth's point that it actually might be more of a risk for Abrams than he's letting on. Not if he lets down fans, but so much as is he just going to be the guy who is known for uh, nicely regurgitating something that came before Mission Impossible, mm. Star Trek, Star Wars. I mean, everyone says, you know, basically his Star Trek was much more Star Wars than Star Trek. Um, I, I do think it's, it's, I think it, 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 rankles some fans that he basically 
just kick Star Trek to the curb. Um, hopefully, you know, the, the series will continue with a filmmaker. Uh, I'm going to throw his name out there right now, Brian Singer, who is an actual Star Trek fan, whereas Abrams and all those guys, I think they only did Star Trek because they couldn't do Star Wars. Now that they have it, they're going to... And also, Abrams is very good at mimicking stuff. Like, I, I think, you know, Super 8 is a good example. If he can, if he can do something kind of along the lines of, of uh, what Kirshner did with Empire or what Lucas did with the original Star Wars, kind of mimic that tone the way he mimicked kind of Spielberg stuff in Super 8, I think we'll get a, uh, definitely get a, a Star Wars movies that, that, Star Wars movie that looks and feels like a classic Star Wars movie. Do you really, though? I mean, that's that's kind of interesting. I'm completely to me. lying. I mean, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a liar. I, I think he's. I think he'll. If anything, he'll make a fun movie. I don't know if it'll be a great movie, but I think he definitely knows how to entertain people. And I, a lot of it just comes down to the script and how compelling are these characters going to be. Um, and hopefully, it doesn't get as bogged down in sort of political exposition the way that the prequels did and it just kind of gets on with an adventure and I think he uh, <clears throat> excuse me on that level he'll be sorry I'm getting all weird here uh, I know I know uh, but let's let's move on for me I want to talk to you guys about um, what are the greatest uh, sort of challenges in making a Star Wars movie that's going to let me put it to you this way. It's going to be very weird to see the poster for Star Wars that says, from the director of Star Trek. How, how, how odd do you think it will be, uh, one, for fans to kind of see his Star Wars movie and not just, you know, see basically a, a, a hashed over, rewarmed kind of Star Trek reboot? Well, it's a, it's a, first of all, it's a nightmare for Paramount right now, right? Because yeah. um, they're... And he's going to be doing press for Star Trek in a few months, and everyone's going to be talking about Star Wars. Like, Star yeah. Trek Into Darkness is going to be old news by then. Uh, but I don't think that uh, Disney or Lucasfilm need to sell it as an Abrams movie either. I mean, Star Wars sells itself, right? So all you right. need on the poster is Chewbacca and Yoda, basically. High five, eh? Yoda's ghost, I guess. <laughs> That's right. A back to back shot like they're in a buddy cop there. Swing <laughs> dancing. <laughs> um, now, like you brought up an interesting point, though, about um, about Paramount. I mean, do you think is Star Wars basically the the town slut that every franchise <laughs> filmmaker will leave their franchise for? I mean, you had you had uh, Matthew Vaughn basically willing to walk away from X Men to do Star Wars. Zack Snyder, the rumors about him jumping ship from Warner Brothers to go do Star Wars, and now Abrams. I mean, basically, is Star Wars just the one that you can't turn down if, if well, offered. Well, I think, it's, I think it's, it's either or, because we also have had a lot of people say, and even Abrams originally say, they did turn it down because it's Star Wars. It's, it's too big, you know, and yeah. it's, it's very intimidating. But at the same time, you know, and what probably made Abrams come back is it's Star Wars. It's like this, <laughs> for some people, would be such a dream gig, you know, and even Whedon talked about, you know, the two seconds he had of like, oh no! But then, of course, he couldn't do it with his. You know, he had a firm. He had a firm commitment to do Avengers. Like, obviously, Abrams is not signed to do Star Trek three. So I thought though, really it, here's the confusing thing: there there were some recent reports that um, suggested that he had some sort of connection to a Star Trek three. I'd have to go back and read them, but it does make me wonder if there's not going to be um, some sort of legal. Some sort of lawsuit it. that's going to come up at some point. I, I'm guessing it's just like Singer with X-Men 3, where everyone's expecting him to do it, including him, but no one signed a contract, and he has mm -hmm. no yeah. legal obligation. You know? Yeah, because he, was, I mean, he wasn't even definitely going to do Star Trek 2, right? Originally, he didn't. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I wonder if, if his whole team are going to get involved now. Like, what does this mean for the script for Episode 7? I mean... Well, they have Michael Arndt writing it. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, Roth, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I feel like, well, A, that Star Wars isn't so much the town slut, which everybody gets a piece of. It's more of like the Angelina Jolie that no one's saying no to, or like the back in the day, the Liz Taylor, like, that's it. You're done, other Missy. If or she like wants Megan man, Fox she's is there with man. you right now. <laughs> you know? Right. But, I mean, I think, like, to me, I think 
Brad Bird was always the one that I wanted to see because Brad Bird I, and Andrew Stanton, I think, both have the ability to bring in the sweetness and the sense of adventure that I think Star Wars has. But fundamentally, what what I think the Star Wars franchise has, there's always been the rivalry between Star Wars and Star Trek, but I think what the Star Wars franchise has, the original three, was a very simple, clear mythology. And <clears throat> that's what I wonder if J.J. Abrams can do. You know what I mean? Like, it, it has a very fundamental mythological themes and tones that I think speak to everyone. Well, if there's something J.J. Uh, Abrams knows about creating a lore and mythology, it's how to complicate it. I mean, it's Exactly. Just, I mean, are we um, going to have a mystery box? <laughs> well, I mean, here... A well, here's, he, cube mystery box. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you guys now. J.J. Abrams is known for... It just is notorious for his level of secrecy. Um, not quite Christopher Nolan, but up there with that. Um, are we going to look at a Star Wars movie now that's going to be maybe pulled back a bit in terms of what it's going to start to show to fans and, and sort of that level of fan involvement? I mean, they were always going to have some level of secrecy to it, but are we now looking at a, a really ridiculously over-the-top secrecy surrounding uh, a property everybody is rapidly enthusiastic about. I don't think you sign to do a Star Wars movie unless you are, say, Nolan, who was never going to do it, thinking you get full say on everything. I mean, even with someone like, and then I realize um, Whedon, when he was directing Avengers, was not as powerful in Hollywood as Abrams is at this point. But still, you know, there is going to be a level, like with the Marvel movies, where you are part of the team. So, you know, of course, there's going to be a level of secrecy that would have been there no matter what, but it, I don't think this will be 100% everything Abrams wants. It's, it's got to be a, a team thing. It's got to be Lucasfilm heavily involved. There's so much mythology. There's so much continuity. So yeah. I do think it, it will not be, you know, and I'm sure Abrams knows it's not going to just be, here's what I want, and that's all we're doing, you know? Joey, why don't you uh, uh, tell us, what, what are your thoughts on um, uh, whether or not we're going to see a, a Star Wars that might be peppered with some of, you know, J.J. Abrams' usual actors that pop up and things. He does have a little bit of a, a, a kind of a stable. theater company of people. Yeah, Listen, stable. As long as Carrie Russell shows up, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> so, Carrie Russell light, with, the with a lightsaber. lightsaber. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Carrie Russell, lightsaber, make it happen. <laughs> well, all right. Final word from everybody. Um, are you more excited now for Episode 7 now that we know that J.J. Abrams is directing it than you were before? Or... Are you just sort of we'll wait and see, Scott? Uh, I think I am more excited because, like I said, I, I feel like this could mean uh, good things for the Star Trek franchise. Um, our colleague Jordan Hoffman was speculating that we might even see a Star Trek TV show sooner than we might have previously because Abrams isn't going to be around to slow things down anymore. So in that regard, I think it's a positive uh, and you know, like, yeah, it could they could have gone with someone who I hated. I like Abrams's movies, so I kind of feel like after the prequels, it's all uphill. Uh, it's all um, it's you had all to gravy. take the shot, didn't you? <laughs> you had to take the shot. You're dropping those Ghost Rider jokes, and you know, <laughs> fair enough. All right, Joey, what, what what do you think of uh, Abrams? I, I, I'm Wars? still equally excited. Still I would say. Okay. Um, I, I still think it's a safe choice, and I would have liked to see something a little bit more inspired. Um, but I mean, that said, it is a safe choice, so it's. I think it's a fair bet to say it's going to be solid. Okay, Roth. I'm kind of with Joy. I, I was. I, I mean, although I'm contradicting myself with what I just said, but I think I would have been more excited by a Ben Affleck or something very unexpected. And I think that it's very. It's going to be really difficult, no matter what you do, to capture the lightning in the bottle that was those first three films. As much as we love it and we want that to happen, I think that's that's a near impossible task for anybody. All right, Goldman, more excited or about the same? Now that I we mean, know about Abrams. the same with a uh, a wait lifted because of the what if they pick someone I hate? You know, what if they pick <laughs> someone that scared the hell out of me? They pick someone I really like. So I was already excited for these movies, and now uh, I know. You know, I think it's in very good hands. So yeah, now I now I just can stop worrying. 
Now okay, we all have to fight amongst the, each other about who gets to do the said visit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, it's going to be a fight. I think Jim's just going <laughs> to... <laughs> I, I don't even know if they're going to even do anything like that, to be honest with you. I, I do wonder if that'll be the trade-off to, to secrecy is... We'll we'll give you stuff, but nobody gets to go on set. But we'll see. Probably not. They'll probably they'll probably cave. Uh, let me my my final thought on the whole thing. I'm excited. I, I can't say I'm completely surprised that Abrams got the job because I think when Steven Spielberg basically is grooming you as the next him, uh, it's going to be a big ego thing too to be like Spielberg and look Lucas essentially saying to you you're the next us. Uh, it'd be very tough to turn that down. Um, so my my kind of excitement level for Star Wars is is lifted, but I'm actually it's been replaced with a, a small sense of dread for Star Trek because now I feel like say what you will about uh, the manner in which he rebooted Star Trek. I thought it was a lot of fun, even if it's not as cerebral as we Star Trek fans like. I do wonder now if that basically pulls the rug out from underneath that suddenly revitalized franchise. They might try to get another one going, but are we looking at a Brett Ratner situation where they just hire any old gun to come in and do a, a third one, and then everything that you've built towards is essentially flushed down the toilet? We'll see. That will be a conversation we should continue on another one of these sometime. On a different episode of IGN Google Hangout. <laughs> all right, right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll catch you all next time.